I was visiting the studio of an artist friend of mine in Madrid. He was a mid-career artist in his 50s, uh, quite successful locally. He had been doing art ever since he graduated from fan art school. So I told him about our project and how we wanted to help artists make a living from art and he was really interested. Then I told him about the art career map which I was doing and he was thrilled and he wanted to be a part of it. In two, I told him the word merchandising. So I pointed at an oval shaped painting of his and said, imagine this painting printed on an oval shaped pillow. How wonderful, how cool it'll be. His face was turning blue and green and he looked at me and he said, no way, I'm not gonna have my art on your pillow. The best part of working with artists is to get surprised every day and learn something new, like guaranteed. I was amused by how different people operate and how they react to things. And if I were an artist, I would like to have my work printed absolutely everywhere, on panties, on your socks, on your pillows, you name it. I, I wouldn't mind, to be honest, to have my image printed on your pillow. I would be actually quite flattered. And I think it's a good thing for an artist to share their work with the world. Why not? If you're an artist, I'm pretty sure that you had encountered some sort of merchandising, perhaps you know, in a souvenir store in your local museum or in an art gallery, unlikely but possible. Before getting into how and what kind of providers is there in the market, I would like to go back to the concept merchandising. According to Business Dictionary, merchandising is the activity of promoting the sales of goods at retail. For example, when you go to a department store, you receive those samples of a skincare product. And those samples is to promote a full-size product. And if you like it, they expect you to come back and buy the full format. Or if you are at the expo, and you receive some stationaries um, from different companies with their logos printed on it for you to remember them and when you come back to your office. Those products are merchandising. They aim to stimulate your interest and desire to make a purchase. In the entertainment industry, merchandising has a whole different meaning. In the film industry, merchandising is an important revenue stream for studios. Instead of using toys to promote movies, some studios even use movies to promote those toys because they sell even better than the movie. And merchandise sales has become another indicator of success apart from box office sales. I guess I don't have to convince you how important is merchandising in other industries. But how about art? Do you have the same idea that my artist friend? I don't want my work on your pillow. Or are you interested in learning how to do that? I'll tell you two reasons why you should do it, even though you might not completely thrilled about this idea. Number one, if you don't do it, someone else will. One day, a well-known artist a friend of mine, Li Wei, and he called me from airport and he was like, just now I just saw someone was wearing a t-shirt and I was like, uh, was the t-shirt nice? And he was like, no, the t-shirt with my photo on it. And I was like, oh, uh, was the photo nice? <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 like my, my artwork, my photo, my art on his t-shirt. In fact, a few months ago, uh, I was just discussing about merchandising with Li Wei. And he was obviously so busy flying around the world, making his art, you know, we didn't really uh, talk in deeps about this idea. But then, you know, he didn't do it. But people love his work so much, they did it themselves. So if you don't do it, and you are not only leaving this money on the table, you're also giving them a great opportunity to take advantage of your art. Second, you are creating a generation of future collectors through your merchandising. When you were little, I don't know if you have this poster of your favorite band on your dormitory wall. And perhaps you took this poster to your university when you grow up. But then one day you heard this band is playing in your town where you're studying. You just had to go and buy the most expensive ticket to be on the front row. Those posters are like the door openers to the concert. And guess what? Live performance fees accounts for 28% of an average musician's income and is the largest piece of the pie. 
without the posters, the t-shirts, perhaps by the time they reached your city, you had already forgotten about them and you wouldn't have this idea to go to their concert. As we learned before, the goal of merchandising is to sell your product. And your product is your artwork. Not everyone can afford a painting at $10,000, but almost everyone can afford a poster at 10 bucks. This poster will remind them their dream of having a piece of your art on their walls. One day, when they're ready, perhaps they will make a purchase. You see, merchandising may hurt your ego as a fan art professional, but it will not hurt your wallet or your career. By not doing any merchandising, you're not only leaving money on the table, but also giving other sneaky IPR infringers an opportunity to steal your artwork and steal your income. How to start making money from your art merchandising? There are several different ways. Number one using online platforms such as Society6 and Redbubble. There are also a couple of more out there, but those two are the main players in the game. They are very easy to use. You only need to capture high-resolution, high-quality images of your artwork, then upload them to those websites. There are a variety of products to choose from, such as posters, t-shirts, mugs, and bedsheets. The list is very long. You can opt for one kind of product or several kinds. It's your choice. For some products, you will receive a flat fee as royalty. For some other products, you can set your own desired earnings and they will add their cost on top. If you set your price too high, then the final price of the products will be very high and will be not as competitive as others. And it will come across too expensive to buy. I would suggest you to set the same price as other artists with a similar level and style or just set the default suggested price by those platforms. The unbeatable advantage of using such platforms is the ease, is the peace of mind. You don't need to handle logistics, the packing, the tracking, the customer service. Everything is taken care for you. You only need to just upload the artwork and choose what kind of products you give authorization to produce. And it's quite easy to control. You don't need to have a tech background, you know, just like you, know, you can do it from your smartphone. But the downside is you only receive a proportion of the earnings. That is not much. You, know, you don't receive you know, hundreds of dollars. You receive you know, $2, you know, $3 from each product or even less. So it's very hard for you to make a full-time living only from selling on those platforms. Number two, using social media to sell your merchandise. I'm sure you have noticed the Facebook's marketplaces and the buy now button from Instagram. Those are the common social selling channels. Here you can print your own posters and sell on those social media, or you can use print on demand suppliers such as Society6 and Redbubble, as we mentioned earlier. Most of those print on demand companies offer affiliate program, meaning if people make a purchase through your social media link, you get extra amount. However, it is not easy to start selling stuff to people on social media. You will need to invest money in your social media and grow your social presence before you could promote those products and make a lot of sales. Number three, selling on your own website. According to our artist survey, 60% of artists do not have a website for their art. So if you want to sell posters and products on your website, first you need to have a website and have a really good one. Even if you have a website of your own already, you still need two more things in order to sell those products. You need a web store and you need plenty of traffic. Just the web store, there is a cost. You have a few options such as Big Cartel, which enables you to have first five items for free, then a monthly payment for over five items. Or Shopify, which also requires monthly payment. This is on top of website expense such as domain name and hosting. Number four, selling in physical stores such as boutique stores, bookstores, or retail galleries. If you go physical and local, it makes sense for you to produce those items by yourself and then handle the others on your own. However, it's a lot of work. But if you're located in a city with a fair amount of population or tourism, then perhaps it makes sense for you to try and get to know your local collectors. 
You can combine it with a small opening with your original artwork, but the real intention is to sell your merchandising. Unless if the owner of those physical store is a friend or a family, usually it doesn't make any sense for them to handle those orders for you. It's not about the percentage. If they are already running a successful business, they are busy. Just like you, if you are a full-time artist, you are busy. Time is precious and we only get 24 hours a day. That is the most equal thing for all the people, rich or poor, young or old, in the world. We all have limited time. And time is the most scarce resource in the world. And guess what? You're asking the precious time from their operating hours and it's very difficult for them to give you that. As you can see, there are generally two different directions. On one hand, you can use the platforms. They save your time, but they take a big chunk of your earnings. That means you have you know, less money, but more time to focus on your art. But on the other hand, you can do it all by yourself. You can print the things, sell it on your website, and deliver it all by yourself. But this is a lot of work. and You have almost no time for your art. So one way or another, um, there's no, uh, not a perfect solution. I am all in for merchandising, but there is one thing that you should not do. Do not produce a merchandise in the same size and format of your original work. Just like you wouldn't give away a sample for free in the same size and format of the original product, right? If you like the idea of art merchandising, but you feel there's something missing, I have an idea for you. You can make those embellished prints. Many artists are already doing that and they are quite successful. Basically, you can make the print and hand paint on top to make each print unique. It takes less time to produce than your original artwork, but it's still more special than a generic print. It is somewhere in between. The price also goes higher than the poster, but cheaper than your artwork. Now you have a complete product line with different products occupying different niche in the market. So do you mind your art on my pillow? Let me know what you think and leave me a comment below. Do not forget that art merchandising is more than just a product. It is a door opener for a young generation of collectors to get to know and fall in love with your art. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video.